Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at how you can migrate your Excel to Power Apps Canvas app. And we're really gonna deep dive into this one because as we import that Excel data, I'll show you how you can change the column types in the import process. And then once the Canvas app is actually built, I'll show you how it is responsive out of the box and share some tips and tricks in case you wanna go and tweak some other things. So stick around, this is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna tell you is that there is the other option to import Excel to Dataverse. And I actually did a video on this about a year ago. As you can see, this was during the Christmas time because I had my Santa hat on. Um, however, that option still exists. You can use data flows to go ahead and import Excel data into Dataverse. And if you're interested in that, I'll put the link of that video in the description below. You can go check that out. But over here, we are gonna go and use the Copilot functionality to get that Excel directly into Dataverse and also build a modern design Canvas app. So let's go take a look at that one. So I'm here now in my Canvas app and right off the bat, I'm gonna go in my home page. I'm also making sure that I'm in the right environment and I'm gonna click this option which says start with data. As I click on the start with data, right over here now you see this new functionality to upload an Excel file. This is where we start the import process. But before we start clicking over here, let's go take a look at that Excel spreadsheet. So here you go. The first Excel spreadsheet is actually to go ahead and test the quality. So granted, this one is not very large. It only has 97, which is about 96 rows of data. Uh, but check some of the things out. There's got a different lot of data types. So I'm expecting Copilot to at least identify this is a price type column. And when I'm importing it, if see first of all how the columns like feature uh, columns such as color, because they're, they're more like a multiple choice type column. How can we go ahead and import that? And in the import, make sure that if Copilot doesn't already pick it up, we have the option to change, say, a single line of text over to, say, a choice type. So I'm back on the home. I'm gonna click on start with data. I'm gonna click on upload with Excel. And over here now, it's telling me to upload in Excel. It doesn't give me any option to go and say, pick it from OneDrive or SharePoint. Maybe that's a future functionality, but over here, the flexibility is directly from your device. And the first thing I'm gonna test is quality. And that quality is coming from this machine order data Excel spreadsheet. So I'll select it, I'll click on open. And now the import process is working in at least the initial data that is coming in the assessment, and then also giving us the options to at least see the first 20 rows of data. That is what's happening right now. And remember, in this case, it's not a whole lot. It's only about 96 rows of data. And there you go. Immediately, the data came up. It's only showing us the preview of the first 20 rows of a table. So keep that in mind. This is not everything. This is the first 20 rows. Uh, I like that the toggle switch is already turned on because anything which is your first row is already header. It picks that up. Uh, it also went and gave it a nice name, which is perfect. I don't already like what I see over here, so I won't change it, but I have the, have the option by clicking on the pencil uh, and not just changing the display name or the plural name. Also, the primary column. So let's, let's spend a few minutes on this one. Primary column is going to be whatever is the column that gives it a unique association with that row of data. Um, so it's actually coming and saying, hey, these are the primary column selections that you have. Uh, do you actually want to stick with this or do you want to change it to something else? Um, so I'm gonna go back to my Excel spreadsheet just to review that. This is the Excel, Excel spreadsheet that we are pulling it in, uh, and I have an ID column, but I did not see that ID column right over here. I'm gonna double check again. Uh, I'm not seeing that ID column, so we need to actually fix that problem right over here. Uh, and the, one of the things I've noticed is that this ID column, if I go and edit the column, it is showing me as a whole number. So I can basically just go ahead and change that into a number or a text, so I'll select with text, and I'll go and click on update, now let's go and see, if I go now into my um, edit option here, if I go to my primary column, aha, there you go, I see that ID column. Um, so I'm gonna select that and click on save. You know, one more thing I noticed over here is when I came back in, it had these columns like do not modify, do not modify, the do not modify coffee machine, do not modify road checksum. Where is that coming from? Because I just did not see that in my Excel spreadsheet. Uh, when I come over here, I see from scrolling from the left all the way to the right, I don't see it. However, one thing caught my attention. You see, we are starting with actually column number D. So if I really go to the left and I said, now see the option to expand it, here you go. I actually see these hidden columns over here. So it's a good idea to point out that when you're going and importing it through Copilot, Copilot is really smart. 
things that are not available to your naked eye, Copilot picks that up. So I was really impressed with that one feature. Thought I'll bring that to your attention. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll close this Excel spreadsheet because we don't need to see this anymore. Uh, I'll say anymore. I'll go back into our uh, import process. Um, and then the other thing is, let's go and see what else stuff we can do over here. A uh, couple of things caught to my attention. First of all, the color. The color is coming in as a single line of text. I'd actually like to go ahead and change that into some options or a choice type column. Um, so for that, let's go and see that Excel spreadsheet. So I guess I do have to go ahead and open up that Excel spreadsheet again. Um, here it is. Here's the Excel spreadsheet. It is opening up and we'll go scroll all the way to the top and the colors, these are the options that I have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that column of color, which Copilot said was a text, but we're gonna go and change that into an options type. So I'm just gonna move this one to the right over here. We're gonna go back into our Copilot right over there. And then in this edit column, I'm gonna scroll a little bit to the right, scroll a little bit right in this color. I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna click on edit column. In the edit column, I'm gonna say, what is the data type? It picked up single line of text. I'm gonna change that and say, hey, this is gonna be a choice type and it'll be of choice. So now that I do it, it went and gave me this options. So what I gotta do is I gotta go ahead and match it to the ones that we already have. So the first set is, is the black, blue, green. Let me go and add that. And the second set was red, silver, white. So let me add that as well. Now you can leave these default values, which is the numeric value tied to each label in the choice. You can leave it as is, or you can go and change it. Um, since it is already doing it out of the box, I am not going to change this, but you have that option. Now, as we are changing the data type altogether, we went from single line all the way to choice, the question that might come up in your mind is, hey, is that going to break or is that going to erase the data from this column? And the answer is no, it does not. It maintains it, but it also changes the, the column type. So check this out. I'm gonna click on update and you will see that this also icon changes. So I'll click on update and now the data still stays. The icon changes from a single line of text all the way to the choice. I really, really like this functionality over here um, because it helps us to kind of clean up the data and prep it before it even goes ahead and gets imported into Dataverse. Really like that. So there's another one that we can actually change. And if I scroll a little bit to the right, it is this feature, the feature. And if I bring over our Excel spreadsheet again, uh, the feature only actually had two different types of features. If I scroll to the right, you see in the feature, there is app connectivity and then there is auto brew. Perfect scenarios again for a choice options type. So let's do that change as well. Click on feature, click on edit column. I'm gonna change the data type to a choice. It is gonna be of a type choice. And then the first one, it is going to be app connectivity. And the second one is going to be auto brew. Now it's numerical value of each of the choices. I'm gonna leave that as is by default. The one thing I just wanna call out is that make sure when you're making this change, keep it consistent. So whatever you see the text exactly how it is right now, replicate that in your choices. So for example, the A is uppercase, there's a space, and then the C is uppercase for the app connectivity, replicate that over here. Therefore you avoid any potential confusions that might happen in the intake process, all right? Let's keep that in mind. So I've gone ahead and I'm clicking on this update, the feature over here, changing the choice. I like what I see over here. The other, other thing that caught my attention is again, in the Excel spreadsheet, um, when we go ahead and open this up, you actually see that in the photo, uh, this is coming in as actually URLs. If I go to my Copilot import, it automatically picked that, picked that up as a website, some type of a URL. So you see, it is actually pretty smart in the way it sees all the data, it is importing it. Every once in a while, you have to go and tweak it and that's just what I showed you. So things look good. I'm gonna go and now click on create an app. And right now it is saying, thanks Daniel, we are creating an app for you. Now, it is actually building the full blown Canvas app. So it's not that it just went into the studio and made the data connection and things, see ya. No, no, it, it is actually gonna build the full blown Canvas app with one full screen. And it's gonna be fully responsive. You, you'll see what I mean. So we are coming into the studio right now. It says it's loading. And any second on the left side, we will actually see a full screen that is created as well. And you will ski that screen take effect right now. It says, welcome to Power App Studio. We've seen that before. And then on the left side, we see the main screen one. Click on the data and see that it's gone ahead and made our Dataverse connection using all the data that we just provided. But check out the screen, all right? This is now fully responsive. And if you don't believe me, I'm gonna show it to you. First of all, the overall modern look is pretty nice, all right? It's really neat. I like the look and the feel that it's giving me different layers, not just from the header body to the footer, but also layers of how each of these labels sit on top of the original background. I love the layer effect that it has over here. 
uh, but but it is responsive so check this out if i now to go ahead and change it uh, from the window size to the canvas size it went and changed that but i know what you're thinking so daniel that's way too easy let me sh show me something that's going to wow me all right check this out from the tablet i'm going to go and now go to the I apple ipad uh, 10.2 inch and it went and did that but if that doesn't really intrigue you i can go ahead and change that all over to say an iphone 8 and it went and did this as well but, but, but check this out all right so it automatically went this into a landscape mode what if i want to go ahead and change this into the portrait well, I can go and do that as well. I can change the orientation. So if I went and now change the orientation, it directly did that to me. Fully responsive, out of the box, just based on a few clicks we did as we imported the data. So this right here, you see, is a gallery, all right? But if I click on the gallery item, it directly took me into a responsive edit form. And you should have known this because forms by default are responsive as long as you put them inside a container. And that's exactly what's happening over here. So whether we see this as a phone or whether we go ahead and see this as a Canvas app, it directly becomes responsive and it works really well out of the box. So now I just wanna show you how you can go and tweak a few things because that way it doesn't break its responsive designness, but you are still able to make alterations. So I'm gonna go outside into the studio and then first of all, right over here, the data that's coming in is not what I want. So the first thing I'm gonna go and actually get the data and I'm gonna change that over into say, the machine name. All right, so now that's kind of making sense because this whole name before was just some good, I don't like it. Now the coffee name such as a barista light, that making, makes sense to me. Uh, I'll go and do the exact same thing for the other one as well. Say in this one, I wanna maybe go and get the cost associated with it. Um, so I'll go and try to find something to do with the uh, the cost, so I'm gonna scroll down, and one of them actually says price. So I'll select the price, and now we have a price over here. And you can always go and tweak it by putting in a dollar value, so let's try that as well. And you can always go and tweak it, so I'll actually go and do something like this, dollar value, single ampersand, and there you go. Now you actually have the dollar prefix for this. So now it's beginning to make more sense. Other thing is in the search. So this is out of the box search that is provided directly to you. And you know that the search will only take effect for the gallery. So if I actually go outside and select the entire gallery, this is the function, the power effects function tied to that gallery. Now what I'm noticing is that in the search, it is only taking a few things. It's taking the ID, average cups per week, any of the expressos per week, and then the coffee machine name. Uh, but what I would like to get is also stuff like this, the actual machine name. So what I'm gonna do, is just add another section over here in the power effects function for items i'm going to go and now type in for coffee and i'm going to look for it right there i'm going to go scrolling down and we should see any second the machine name so as i go and select the machine name it went and updated that directly but now i should be able to search based on the machine name as well so just to make things a little bit more exciting if i scroll all the way to the down and i search for something okay airport duo is a good one so let's go bring that all the way to the up and i'll go and search for um, airport and I start doing it IntelliSense kicks in and it's already going and filtering it and there you go these are all the airport ones over there really nice search feature directly added out of the box okay uh, but let's continue a little bit more on the right side you've got now an edit form directly inside a container which means it makes it responsible by default and just in case if you did not know that that is how you can make it responsive you take the edit form and as long as the edit form is sitting inside a container the form becomes responsive that was actually one of the first iterations of the responsive design that they released inside canvas app and it still functions over here uh, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove a couple of things. Um, I don't need any of these do not modify ones. So I'm clicking on the edit and I'm going to go and click on these ellipses and I'm going to remove that. I don't like that. Do not reply for uh, that section. Do not reply for row checksum. Remove that. Uh, and then also for the modified on, completely removing it. Uh, maybe I don't even need the color. So I'll go ahead and remove that one as well. But what I did notice is that in the photo section, it's only showing me the link. I would love to actually see the image directly. So what I'm gonna do is inside the edit form, I'm directly going and picking up that data card and I'm gonna select inside it, all right? I'm selecting inside that. Now I'm gonna click on insert and I'm gonna click on the image and in the image, I'm gonna go ahead and add an actual image. It's gonna say, hey, data card is locked. Do you want to go ahead and unlock it and add it? Yes, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna click on that button and now an image came in. But what I have to do is I don't have to do anything fancy. I don't have to write any complex PowerFX code. I just see that when I go and click on this link, what did that say? It just said parent.default. Well, let me just go and type that direct thing over here as well. In the image control, it is a sample image. I'm gonna go and do the exact same thing, parent.default. That's all I'm putting it in. And now you directly see the image coming in as well. 
So what I'll do is this one, which is just the link, I'll go ahead and make it invisible by toggling the visible property to off. And then here, I can go ahead and make this one a little bit bigger. Let's make sure we use this entire real estate, all right? Well, the first thing you gotta do is save it. So I'll go ahead and actually put in my logo, my name, and I'll click on save. But the real test is that this change that we made, the tweaking, removing of controls, modifying it to an image, did that also become responsive? And it does. So check this out. We're gonna go and click on play. And then by default, see it went to the tablet view and you already saw it become responsive because now there is no room for another column. So this became just one column with multiple rows. But if I go and now tweak this, I go and change it into say the iPhone 11, um, it went and became fully responsive too. Just to be sure, if I go ahead and now change the orientation, you see the responsiveness stays and it stays because you've kept it existing edit form and the edit form is inside the container. So the full responsive design stays as is. We haven't disturbed it whatsoever, even though we made changes to it. So that part is pretty awesome. Those of you who know me know that I'm a cautiously optimistic person. I really like to learn these new features, study their functionalities before I get excited about it. However, this truly got me excited because the flexibility to import and manipulate Excel spreadsheet directly, not even using data flows anymore, but directly inside the Power Apps Canvas App Studio site is truly remarkable. And the flexibility to tweak your data, like the one that we did adding the choice tag column, is truly phenomenal. And how that modern app, the modern Canvas app, automatically has features and functionalities built into it. And we were able to go and tweak that along the way in the edit form without modifying any of the responsive design. That truly is phenomenal. So hopefully this video got you excited and you can start testing and playing with it to start planning for your future apps. And until then, keep using Canvas apps. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.